Okay, so Jen Cutter's down, and we've been playing a buttload of video games. More specifically, a lot of DDR. This is a DDR pad for the Xbox. It works all fine and dandy, but for me, it sucks. I need something bigger and harder because that bunches under my feet and I step heavy. And plus, I got big feet and I hit like 500 freaking buttons at once. Now, solution. I could go buy a red octane pad for 200 freaking dollars US. Not gonna happen. I make my own shit. So, that's what I did. I went out and I made my own hard DDR pad for just under 50 bucks. And here's how I did it. Materials for this project include an old, cheap, crappy DDR pad. Not a necessity. You can hack a controller to do the same thing. See episode 4 on how to hack a controller. 36 by 36 plywood or MDF, half inch would be best. 36 by 36 plexi or acrylic, and it needs to be an eighth of an inch thick. 36 by 36 custom printed pad graphic, whatever you want, just make sure that the graphics on the pad line up to how your buttons are going to be on your pad. Screws, aluminum foil, and wire. I personally prefer Cat5. Tools. Soldering iron, solder, drill, duct tape, and save the foam padding from the mat if you used one. Here's your process. First, gut the old crappy DDR pad. You're going to need the, uh, the uh, computer board, the board and the brains, and the plastic thing up top, and the foam from inside. Everything else, throw away. Just make sure you kept track of which way the traces go for the buttons. Now, the reason you paid attention to the traces on the pad on the inside is that we're going to be soldering wires to the connection points on the board and running wires from there to the buttons. So, after you get all your soldering done, lay your grounding foil on your plywood itself and tape it down. Duct tape's the greatest thing ever invented. And now, Position your buttons around on the pad as you see fit, where they're going to work out best for you. So, and the button needs to be ground foil on the bottom, then a layer of foam with holes in it. It's got to have the holes so that when you lay the foam on top and step on it, it'll actually make a connection. Then, connect the wire to the top foil, and that doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just twist it up in there and it'll work just great. Tape it all down make a nice big duct tape sandwich lather rinse and repeat for every button until you're done simple as that once all your buttons are laid out all taped down and look halfway decent lay your graphic on top put the plexi on top of that screw it down very carefully drill pilot holes before you put a screw in it or else you run a very very high risk of splitting the plexi with the screw play. That's all you have to do. That's all there is to it. Plug it in, have a ball. If something doesn't work right, take it apart, wiggle it a little bit, done. Lessons learned. Now, when you're doing mods, you know, everything that you see me do is normally Rev 1. It's the first time I did it, and it pretty much works out. I'll have to work out the kinks before you see it. But, you know, take your time and have a lot of fun with it. You know, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. I did mine 36 by 36 because I'm six foot one. I have a, a long leg span, but make it fit your size. And, you know, if you decide to do it, please email us. Shed, uh, send us pictures. Show us what you did and how you made it better. That would be great. Wes at hack5.org, info at hack5, any of us. Email us, let us know. Uh, wiring diagrams, plans, pictures. And uh, our personal graphic will be posted in the show notes on the forums. Enjoy the rest of the show.